All right, so my name is uh, Dean Hyman, uh, COO and General Manager of BrainPop. I'm thrilled to be here. It's our first time presenting here in the desert. And there you have our uh, cast of characters uh, to kick us off. BrainPop's been around since 1999. Some of you in the room might have heard of us by show of hands. Anybody? Uh oh, OK. All right, so I'm going to move along to my 18th slide, I think. All right, so I'm going to fill in some gaps, especially for those who haven't looked at us in the last four or five years. I'm going to do that relatively quickly. Uh, unlike some of the other speakers, probably for me, nine minutes is a lot, not a little. Um, so here you have representation of four of our main products. Um, Tim, right beside Moby over here, Brain Pop, that's geared from third to eighth graders, and it is um, cross curricular animated content that's uh, quite popular. Um, Annie, beside him with the glasses, is from Brain Pop Junior, uh, which is our offering, our cross curricular offering, all digital, all animated for K3. And then uh, the newest addition is Ben over there on the, your right. And Ben is the, um, along with Moby, is the uh, star of Brain Pop ESL, which is our offering for English language learners. Between the four of, the, of them, and then of course you have Moby on the far left, the robot. Between the four of them, this product is uh, subscribed to in one way or another by uh, over 20% of US schools, and it, uh, it's growing internationally very fast. We have localized versions in Spanish, French, Chinese, British English, Hebrew, and I'm probably forgetting one, Chinese, did I mention? Um, and these are localized products and versions, but also local teams marketing it in those markets. Along comes the iPad. Uh, so this is a representation of our mobile apps. Um, we started with iOS, now on Android, on Windows 8, on um, well, we even did WebOS at the time, for those of you who still remember that five minute flash in the pan. Um, and this is basically an incarnation of our, of our strategy to, to basically be, uh, despite the fact that we're a flash, an all flash product, to really be available on all devices, uh, not just technically so that people can reach us, but also uh, because we're strong, strong believers in the disappearing kind of gap between, uh, or divide between formal and informal learning, between learning at school and outside of school, between learning for fun and learning, uh, learning as prescribed or as uh, you know, assigned. So I'm not even sure which one of the apps this one is. I believe it's our Chrome app. Oh, there you go. There's confirmation. Um, did I click on that? I didn't mean to. OK. Well, thank you. <laughs> you can explore it later. Uh, this is, this is the, the other app that I didn't mention. We also developed a Chrome app for, uh, for Chromebooks. So this series of apps has uh, proven quite popular. We've, uh, we're approaching the three and a half million download uh, mark. And it's among the top 10. I'm not sure today. It's probably number seven or so top grossing iPad apps. Two of our apps are in the top 20 uh, free apps for education on the iPad. Um, and we also have it in multiple versions for multiple markets. OK, that, there it goes again. I meant to move to the next slide, not to click on it. So two years ago, uh, we, we were looking, we've been tracking for a number of years the games space, the learning game space. Thank you. And, uh, and we realized after a short uh, period that really what the world needs is not necessarily more people creating learning games, but more teachers using learning games in the classroom. OK, that's not my slide. Could you queue up, please, the third and last slide? So we created um, a platform for learning games um, that focuses on other people's contents, content, content from universities, uh, from grant-funded uh, projects of the past, from nonprofits and for-profits. And these are uh, learning games from the, uh, okay, I'm going to try once more to pull that slide up. Uh, 
Okay. All right. Next slide. No. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we we created a platform, an ecosystem, in which these various organizations that have created some really amazing learning games, games that were designed for very often and definitely belong in the classroom, but weren't really getting usage. And uh, we partnered with the organizations behind them. We matched their content, uh, their games, to our content. We aligned it to the state standards or to the common core, as the case may be. We aligned, um, we basically uh, a lot, took our, our pipeline, our, our use, user base of teachers and students and put them at the disposal of these organizations that have uh, created really, really wonderful games. The slide that's missing up there is a list of our current partners. Um, I was informed this morning that uh, New Mexico State U just joined today, so it wouldn't have been updated anyhow had it been up here. Uh, but you would recognize some of the names up there. There's Carnegie and uh, MIT-related uh, ventures up there. There's uh, Filament Games and iCivics. There's, uh, and then there are a lot of, of companies and organizations you may never have heard of because you never heard of them, and that's exactly the point. So we uh, created this ecosystem two or three ISTEs back, and it has, I, I looked on the way here at the, at the statistics, it's garnered over a million and a half hours of play in the last 12 months. We thought we are propelling the space forward by putting this a few years ahead of, the, ahead of history, ahead of demand, putting it out there and we'll wait, we have patience. And instead we discovered that there's a huge pent up demand, a huge willingness to, to, uh, to use games in the classroom. And uh, we just, I guess, Teachers needed a place to find these games and to have them contextualized for them. That, uh, that's why we're here at the, uh, at the conference. Uh, we're hoping that uh, we'll identify additional uh, folks for whom distribution of great games will not necessarily be easy and for whom we can, we can solve a problem. We're hoping that you're looking at, at investing in this space and that maybe this distribution system can be helpful in terms of adjusting for that marketing uh, line on the, uh, on the P&Ls. And uh, I'd love to speak to anyone uh, who would like to about this at any time. I actually have a one minute left. I can take a question if that's okay. I'm not sure that the camera is set up for that, but if anyone has a question. That, by the way, I don't think I mentioned that venture is called Game Up. Uh, like BrainPop, it's family-owned, independent, not really open for investment, uh, but definitely uh, open for a lot of partnership. Any questions? Can I see the hand? Yep. Yeah. So the first question was, uh, how do students find it? Is it through BrainPop or somewhere else? And the second was regarding the revenue model. So I'll, I'll take the second one first. The revenue model for BrainPop is subscription. And the revenue model for GameUp, there is none. So it's, it, it, it's free. Um, regarding how they find us, brainpop.com slash games, and it's aligned to our topics as well. Thank you very much.